Hey guys, welcome back to another CSS tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how we can implement a iOS like slider into into web or HTML. So a slider, also known as a range element, is basically just a um, it's like a element which allows you to select a number from within any range and yeah, I'm going to be showing you guys how we can actually use that element in HTML. So the basic way to get it is an input type range. Let me show that here. And yeah, this will be familiar to almost everyone in the audience. It's pretty simple. It's just going from zero to a hundred or any range which you specify. And what I'm going to do is just put it in the center so it's easy to see. Because to customize this is actually a bit harder than it seems. Let me just okay. So yeah, to customize this slider is a bit harder than it seems. Don't know why it's not going to center. But that's fine um, because you can't just do something like let's give this an ID of slider. It's not a very standardized implementation. If we try and do background color red you'll see nothing is happening and it's just difficult to customize this. So I'm going to show you guys the steps we need to take to make this appear consistent across devices and to customize it wherever we want. Now the first thing we want to do is we actually want to just reset the appearance of this completely. So I'm going to set the width to be not 100%. I'm going to set the width to be something like 200 pixels and the height can be something like I will just say it's auto or max content, doesn't really matter because it's a pretty fixed height. I think max content would be better. And yeah, what we need to do is we're just going to reset the appearance. So we set appearance none, background transparent, cursor pointer, and border none. And then we can also add platform specific ones such as WebKit appearance. Set this to none. And essentially what we've done here is we've just reset its appearance. So now none of these preset styles on different browsers are going to get in the way. Obviously it's still the same here, but that's just because we haven't set anything. So, oh, ah, I know why it wasn't working. I even forgot to link the CSS. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, there we go. This actually makes a lot more sense. Okay, sorry about that slight glitch. Let me just put it in the middle again. Okay, so now our thing's in the center. We've reset its entire appearance, and now what we can do is start customizing it specifically for the different platforms. And we want to standardize this across the uh, different platforms or web browsers. So for Safari, this is going to be WebKit, and it's, we're going to be first customizing the slider's runnable track. So this is essentially just the track which it runs along. We can just set its background color to something like, uh, let's just have blue, and you'll see we get this. And we can also set its height. I don't like it when it's the same height as the as the thumb, so we just set it to be two pixels. And okay, that's a bit low actually. And we have three pixels. Yeah, that's a bit better. And yeah, you can see that now it's only three pixels wide. And you'll see you've run into another problem in that the thumb is no longer centered. Let me make the background color gray. Just so it's a bit easier to see. There we go. So to fix the thumb being uncentered, I think this is actually a problem specific to WebKit, um, but it's fine, it's pretty easy. Because you're generally setting the slider to be a fixed height, you can just translate the thumb by a set amount and it should actually just fix itself. So just like with earlier, we need to reset this entire appearance. So I'm just gonna set WebKit appearance to none and appearance also to none. And then to translate it, we can use a different range of different techniques, but you can also just set a negative margin at the top. So let's do something like minus five pixels. And that should 
translate it, I believe. Where's it gone? Oh yeah, you can't actually see it at the moment, but let's just translate my negative 5 pixels and give it a background color of white, just so we can see it again. I'm also going to have to give it a size and height now that we've reset its entire appearance. So let's just give it a height of 50 pixels and a width of 50 pixels. That might be way too big, but we'll see. Yeah, that's way too big. Uh, maybe something a bit more appropriate would be 5 pixels. Okay, now that's too small. 15. Okay, I think 20 would be fine. Yeah, that's good. And you can see it's not really perfectly centered, so I can move this a bit higher up. I'm going to use 7.5. And yeah, that looks about perfectly centered. You don't actually have to worry about resizing because the height of the slider is fixed. So as long as we translate it by the same fixed amount, then it should be centered. And I can also give this a border radius of 50% to make it a circle, as well as a one pixel border, just so it's a bit easier to see. There we go. So yeah, that's basically how we've managed to customize our slider. You can see it's a lot more work than another element, which would be a similar sort of style because we have to reset a lot of the factory set cells. Now what we've only done, we've only actually customized this for WebKit. So if we use Firefox or Chrome, Chrome might work, but Firefox likely won't. So we need to do the same sort of thing with uh, Mozilla. And to do that, we can do just do the same thing. Essentially just copy and paste code, but you can't do this because if if you're on Safari this isn't going to work so this entire style is going to be invalid and if you're on Mozilla this entire thing isn't going to be valid so it's not going to work so you do just need to copy code unfortunately but that's all right with Mozilla you don't actually have to so uh, with the track so yeah with Mozilla we can just take over the same sort of things background color blue, height 3 pixels and for the thumb let me separate this we'll do moz range thumb and we can just take over the same things we don't actually have to translate it by minus 5 pixels because uh, only WebKit has the issue of keeping the thumb below the, below the track by default. So yeah, also don't have to re replace the appearance because Mozilla doesn't have the same sort of factory default settings that WebKit has. So these were the basic settings you need. And obviously you can customize background color, height, uh, thumb, however you want, but these are how you get it to be standard across all different platforms. Pretty sizable chunk of code, especially for a CSS style, which is nice, this simple, but that's what you have to do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in a future tutorial. Bye.